fear is something that can either bind us or free us. Villains in Magic the Gathering use it as a tool to control others, to prey on their weaknesses, to force them into forsaking their beliefs. And there have been few in MTG lore who have been defined by fear more so than the Phyrexian demon Gix. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today we have a spooky Magic the Gathering story highlighting one of the darkest beings of the multiverse, the Herald of the Phyrexians, a man who through artifice and malice became a demon and a praetor, serving as the right hand to Yogmoth himself. With our return to the story of the Brothers War, players are again witnessing the terrible depravity and deceitfulness of this villain. Now it's time to learn this character's story. This is the complete history of Gix. Now, if you're enjoying these lore videos, consider supporting our content by becoming a member of the channel, just like these awesome people here who have already joined the Vorthos army. I really appreciate all of your support, and I can't tell you how much this means to the channel. Remember, you can also show your support by liking these videos, becoming a subscriber, and of course, sharing it with friends. Now, prepare for the fright of your life, and let's get back to the lore. Gix was a human born in the waning years of the Thran Empire. In a kingdom of unparalleled technological advances, the Thran as a society still had something like a caste system which saw some of its citizens thrown to the lowest rungs of society. Born to parents of low means, Gix's start to life was as humble as it could be. Born in the year C-5000, centuries before the Brothers' War, Gix led a life of struggle and misfortune, with nothing setting him apart from the other untouchables cast low below the streets of the Thran capital city. Here, in a system of caves known as the Caves of the Damned, Gix and his fellow outcasts grew sick, gaunt, and furious of their betters who literally walked above them. Though the Thran had achieved the unimaginable with their advanced artifice, it did not come without a price. That price would be paid by those most vulnerable in society. Power stones were the shining jewels that ran everything in Thran life. Sources of pure energy that fueled everything from gigantic mechs to the streetlights. The power they contained, however, let off an infectious aura, much like radiation, that caused the Thran citizens to grow sick with bouts of coughing and symptoms much like tuberculosis. Gix and the rest living in the Caves of the Damned fell ill to this sickness, coined Tethys. While Gix as a young man was reserved and shy, the anger that stewed within him started to boil over as Tethys became an ever-growing problem among the outcasts. He had found his voice, fighting for those without one, bucking the establishment rule that had no issue with their suffering. Gaining the support of the others from the cave, Gix grew bold and rebellious, even plotting attacks throughout the Thran capital. The boldest of these plans was an assassination attempt on Glacian, the controversial scientific figure who made Power Stone use a common practice among the Thran. This criminal act was one of great poetry for Gix, as he used a broken shard of a Power Stone to rip into Glacian's flesh, leaving that shard embedded into the scientist's body. Glacian then himself would grow sick of the same illness that had claimed the Caves of the Damned. Little did he know this one act of rebellion would go on to plant the seeds of a civil war that would see the Thran Empire collapse. With Glacian's health continuing to deteriorate from Tethys, experts and those of nobility called for an aggressive measure to save the scientist's life. It was ultimately Glacian's wife, Rebek, who went against social norms in order to save the love of her life. Rebek summoned to the capital Yagmoth, a talented physician who was renowned for his cutting-edge medical technology and techniques. This was a controversial decision because Yagmoth had been banished from Thran society for his questionable methods and extreme ideals concerning medicine. While some of the Thran nobility saw Yagmoth as a madman, Others saw him as a genius who could possibly save them from this growing plague. 
Rebek saw no other means to save Glacian, and thus welcomed Yawgmoth back into the Thrand Empire. While Yawgmoth researched the illness and looked towards a cure, Gix continued to lead his rebellion throughout the streets of nobility. He was determined to tear down the structure that kept him and his people buried under the surface, and even spread their sickness to those who thought themselves too important to mingle with the outcasts. These uprisings became more and more violent, as Gix himself became sicker, his health beginning to fail him just as Yawgmoth discovers a procedure that could cure the afflicted. Yawgmoth, being the great physician that he was, was able to cure the disease that had a stranglehold upon the Thran Empire, though the procedure would be a bit… invasive for those in power. It required that bits of the human mortal form be removed from the afflicted and replaced with artifice, along with being injected with a serum of various metallic alloys. The more flesh, bone, and muscle removed from machinery, the more likely the success of the procedure. In truth, this was Yagmoth pushing his ideals upon the Thran, the belief that flesh was weak and that perfection could only be found in artifice. He wanted to eradicate disease, weakness, and even death with this groundbreaking operation. It would, in fact, cure Tethys, but at the cost of the person's humanity. This was the practice of completion. Yagmoth, positioning himself to control power among the Thran, ordered his cure to the rebellious outcasts under Gik's command. In quelling their violence, Yagmoth grew in influence, as well as supporters who saw him as the savior of the Empire. Gix was so grateful to Yagmoth and his compassion that he pledged loyalty to this man, promising to serve him unto his final breath. Gix at this point was on death's door, and salvation at any cost blinded him to the true price of Yagmoth's cure. However, with that pledge, Yagmoth began to cure the people of the Caves of the Damned and reintroduced them to Thran society. With his newly granted authority as chief medical officer of the Empire, he continued to grow support and sow division by slowly filling the courts with friends he had cured, while claiming his most ardent enemies were rattled by Tethys, quarantining them in the bowels of Thran society. However, while still a man, Gix would feel rebellious again as he too felt betrayed by Yagmoth. Missing the power granted to him by his minions' violent rebellion, Yagmoth began to dilute the serum he gave to the outcasts, even going so far as to send sick people up from the caves to intentionally infect the healthy. Yagmoth dangled his cure over the heads of everyone, all to obtain as much power as possible. In uncovering his betrayal, Gix again organized attacks on Thran's upper class. This, in turn, gave Yagmoth increased funding as well as complete control over the city guard. Following a predictable pattern of attacks by Gix's untouchables, Yagmoth successfully used the city guard to thwart the largest of his riots and captured Gix. Rather than dispose of this useful tool, Yagmoth used his access to Power Stone technology to force him into submission. Gix's mind was altered from that of a rebel grateful of Yagmoth's gift to a sycophant who fervently viewed Yagmoth as a god. With Gix and his rebels under Yagmoth's control, the Mad Doctor attempted to secure himself the ultimate seat of power within Thran society, but he experienced a major setback. When he was exiled, Yagmoth committed countless atrocities on the surrounding kingdoms all in the pursuit of knowledge. That trail of misery would come back to haunt him as a coalition of these battered nations marched on the doorstep of the Thran Empire, threatening war unless justice was delivered to Yagmoth. With the true extent of his depravity revealed, the nobles of Thran were split nearly 50-50, some wanting to again exile Yagmoth to spare the kingdom war, and others standing by the man they believed saved them from destruction. Yagmoth survived this political test, while at the same time uncovering another plane in the multiverse that would provide him the tools he needed to fully bring his vision to reality. This artificial world brought to him by a portal opened by the planeswalker Defed was called Phyrexia. Here on this completely artificial plane with advanced artifice, Yagmoth brought many of the afflicted outcasts along with enemy council members who had voted for his exile. There he continued to perfect his operation and replaced mortal flesh with everlasting machines. 
Here on Phyrexia, he would manifest his ideal. A people immune to illness, to age, blight, weakness. It was his idea of perfection. This was the true completion process, and the first true Phyrexian would be Gix. Fully dehumanized by Yawgmoth and soaked in his depravity, Gix jumped at the opportunity to extend his life further and become the living embodiment of his master's perfect world. Gix was one of the first humans to undergo this process, a fusion of soft flesh, bones, and machine. Gix as a Phyrexian was referred to as a demon, a cold, callous, and cruel shell of himself. When first he was driven to act to help others who suffered, Gix the Praetor lived only to serve the will of Yagmoth, who now was the god of Phyrexia. It was now time for Yagmoth to claim the power he had worked so hard to achieve, to spread his perfection across the Thran Empire. Gix acted as Yagmoth's right hand man in the conflict that would become known as the Thran Phyrexian War, or the Thran Civil War. Gix controlled the Thran Guard, which Yagmoth had replaced with partially completed soldiers who now had distinct Phyrexian traits. Using them, he managed to beat back the band of nations who declared war on the Thran for sheltering him. Still, Trouble came from within as more and more nobles were disheartened by the war and began to see Yagmoth as the mad tyrant he was. Though countless rebellions sprouted, Gix was always there to brutally put them down before they threatened his master's rule. The war came to an end when brave citizens of the Thran finally stood up to the tyranny of Yagmoth and Gix, sacrificing themselves and setting loose noxious gas upon the Thran capital, forcing the Phyrexians back through the portal to Phyrexia. Rebek ended their intrusion by closing the portal off with Power Stone Shards. Yagmoth and Gix, along with countless citizens looking to escape the city's fall, were now locked away on Phyrexia. There, they continued to amass forces of Phyrexians, Gix leading countless campaigns through other portals to different planes, completing an unknown number of worlds and forcing them to serve Phyrexia. As the Artificers Urza and Mishra uncover the Power Stone closing the Dominarian Phyrexian portal, they unwittingly reopen the gateway, with Yagmoth's eyes again fixed on conquering his old home. For the first time in 5,000 years, Gix again appeared on Dominaria. With his new status as a demon and a praetor, a high commander of Phyrexian forces, Gix was tasked with gathering information on this modern day Dominaria as well as destabilizing any potential threats to their pending invasion. As he steps through the portal, he finds that Dominaria is again deep in a plane shattering war, a landscape Gix was most accustomed to and well equipped to exploit. This war was known as the Brothers War, which saw the sibling rivals Urza and Mishra fighting for artifice dominance. In preaching Yagmoth's ideals of perfection through artifice, he found Mishra's camps were most susceptible to the message and began weaving his whispers throughout the warband. While Urza and his followers looked to achieve perfection through artifice, it wasn't at the cost of their humanity. Mishra, on the other hand, clouded by jealousy and resentment, would do anything to prevail over his brother, even succumbing to the whispers of a mad god. Gix's ultimate goal was to sow division, weaken military forces, and topple standing governments to pave way for a full Phyrexian invasion led by Yagmoth. The Brothers War was the perfect vehicle to achieve this goal, however his true prize throughout this conflict was the corruption of Mishra. With the Artificer's health failing, but hatred still burning in his heart for Urza, Gix came to the dying man with salvation. Much like his master had done for him 5,000 years ago, Gix offered Mishra the cure to his affliction, with not even death able to stop a Phyrexian. Gix personally oversaw the completion of Mishra, replacing his weak flesh with artifice and his blood with glistening oil, making him the first new Phyrexian on Dominaria in centuries. Aside from his relatively humanoid Phyrexian form, Gix was also instrumental in crafting Mistra's more monstrous dragon engine body. With his torso fused with that of a metallic dragon, Mistra and its forces would be unstoppable and the will of Yagmoth would be in the ruling body of Dominaria. His mission would be a success, but fate would have other plans for Gix. In seeing his brother's humanity lost and sewn to a dragon engine, 
Urza was freed of hate and sought only a merciful end. He uses the Silex to wipe clean both he and Mishra's forces. While Urza's life was saved thanks to his latent planeswalker spark, Mishra was utterly destroyed. And with it, Gix's success. The Phyrexian demon slinked back through the portal to Phyrexia, awaiting his master's judgment. Returning to Phyrexia, Gix lamented on the easily subjugated minds of the mortals that now rule Dominaria. It was Gix who devised the Sleeper Agents, stealth Phyrexians that could be implanted into communities and programmed to sabotage key defensive positions as well as sow division among the populace. This would further prepare Dominaria for the Phyrexian invasion, but as the first of the Sleeper Agents attempted to enter Dominaria, they found that the plane was locked from them. The use of the Silex shattered more than the brothers' armies. It tore at the fabric of the multiverse itself. It created pocket planes shut off from the greater multiverse, which came to be known as the Shard of the Twelve Worlds. With this, Dominaria was, essentially, shielded from another Phyrexian invasion. Yagmoth's fury was a weapon he wielded without mercy, and while Gix wasn't directly at fault for this setback, it was his head the Phyrexian god came for. Rather than executing his minion, Yagmoth had Gix cast down to a lower sphere of Phyrexia known as the Punishment Sphere, which lived up to its name. There, Gix languished in torment for years, until his master again had use for him. After thousands of years of pain and suffering, the Twelve Shards ended, and again the link between Phyrexia and Dominaria was open, with Yagmoth all too eager to finally invade his former home. In summoning Gix from his torture, Yagmoth placed him in command of a Phyrexian unit to attack the small nation of Ephom Pinkar. Even now, Yagmoth only trusted Gix with what some could call a minor operation in this greater war effort. Even so, the power of Urza, who was now a planeswalker, was too much for Gix and his forces to contend with. Urza, with hatred burning in his soul for what the Phyrexians did to his brother, had his mechs wipe clean the sleeper agents and forces under Gix's command, sending the demon Praetor slinking off to the last place he found comfort on Dominaria, the former caves in which he had started a rebellion that snowballed into the creation of the Phyrexians, the Caves of the Damned, now known as the Caves of Coilos. Gix was followed by Urza, as he placed the chief blame of his brother's corruption at the Praetor's feet. In these caves, these two titanic figures would fight. Urza used his planeswalker magic along with the mightstone and weakstone that now lay embedded in his eyes to assault his foe, while Gix used dark spells and a hatred that's been writhing under his skin for untold centuries to meet the attacks blow for blow. They were at a tactical stalemate, but Gix's mind, while depraved, is always looking for an advantage. The demon used a temporal rift to cause an empty void around Urza, the pressure change forcibly pulling at every fabric of his being. The plan was to use this spell to remove the Power Stone eyes of Urza, removing a powerful tool from the battlefield. But Urza had one thing that Gix did not. Allies. The sleeper agent, Zancha, birthed by the machinations of Gix, was able to shun her Phyrexian birth and purpose, achieving individuality even when it was first thought impossible. While Urza could have discarded this lowly Phyrexian, he saw a potential in this deviant, and compassion won Zancha's life. Now in the caves of Coilos, Zancha proved how far removed she was from Phyrexia, by sacrificing herself to interrupt Gix's spell. As the rift backfires, it implodes, and in a fireball, consumes Gix, finally ending his torturous life. While Gix found his end during the Phyrexians' first invasion of Dominaria, this wasn't the end of the demon's influence on the plane. During the events of the Brothers' War, those on Mishra's side who agreed with the ideals of Phyrexia often became the most fervent followers of Gix. They quickly established a religious order preaching the perfection of their new Dark Lords. This was the founding of the Gixian lands by the Brotherhood of Gix. Their monks were half-completed priests who spread the influence of Phyrexia across the tattered battlefields of Dominaria. 
They followed their leader through the portal to Phyrexia once the Silex was used, but they left behind their teachings for a new generation to continue their work. The modern followers of Gix see the Phyrexians as gods, who look only to bring perfection to their world. In uncovering ancient artifacts from the Brothers' War and the First Invasion, this new Brotherhood of Gix continue on the noble cause of championing the ideals of artifice over humanity. And there you guys go, the complete history of Gix, the Phyrexian demon who terrorized Dominaria both before and after his completion. Over the course of his long existence, Gix has brought nothing but despair and misery to those who didn't believe in the will of Yagmoth. But it was that same fervent belief that would ultimately cost Gix his life. There's a lesson to be learned there, I'm sure. With our return to the history books with the Brothers War set, Gix again makes a comeback as a fan favorite baddie in the MTG storyline. What are your thoughts on this Phyrexian demon? Do you think Gix should get the Urte treatment and be resurrected by, oh, let's say, Elish Norn? Let me know in the comment section below. Again, I just want to thank the Vorthos Army, those who have supported this channel by becoming members. You can become a member yourself by clicking the join button on the main YouTube page. You can also support our content by simply leaving it a like, becoming a subscriber, and by sharing it with others. It all goes a long way in helping us grow our community here. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, guys, see ya!